On the last bog, we produced a square wave generator uh, using an LM358. So we're going to add to that this time. So we're going to take that square wave and use two identical integrator circuits uh, using also LM358 to try and produce a triangular wave and a sine wave. So here's the circuit working on I circuit as a simulator. And um, you can see that the uh, you've got the square wave coming out of the first op amp. And then if we actually look at the signals coming out of the integrator, the first integrator produces that uh, triangular wave. And then we feed that into the second integrator and that produces a sine wave. All right, so let's um, let's build it. Okay, so here's the LM358 from the last blog, from the last uh, YouTube video, and it's pumping out a square wave, as we saw. Uh, and I'm just going to try and change it into a triangular wave and also into a sine wave. Now, there are lots of different types of components that you can use for this one and fine-tune it and so forth, but I'm going to stick to the really simple version, which is just um, one type of resistor, and that's all 10K, so I'll just test one of those um, and see what it says uh, well that's not a good start let's try again yeah that's 10k and then the other component I'm going to use is a little ceramic cap And this is reading, so that's around 10,000 nanofarad or um, 10 microfarad. So that is um, a 106. All right, so let's take the annoying light out. Uh, in fact, what we might do is I'll just put from the output here, might as well test that square wave. And that's nice. I'll just put that down to one volt so we can see that. So that's not such a square wave. There we go. So that's in DC mode. I'll swap that over to AC mode when I'm looking for the, um, particularly the sine wave. All right. So let's go from the output to... The negative input inverting and then we set up a voltage divider this is pin number five so that's 10k again going to ground and actually I might move that back one hole to give myself some room for the other half of the divider which goes between VCC and the non-inverting. And then we've got 10K between output and the inverting, and we've got our 106. Uh, try and squeeze it in a nice way. I might put it underneath this way. I was going to solder these together actually to make it easier to use it, but anyway, we'll see how we go. All right, so now if we just get our tester over to this side and see what we're seeing, I'll put it back and I'll put it into AC mode here. And well, maybe it should be in DC mode. All right, so let's have a look at that. And we'll look at maybe changing the scale. And maybe the sensitivity as well. Actually, what I'll do is I'll put that scale back. I'll have to reset this. There we go. All right, so now we just need to get the right scale. And hopefully we can see a triangle appear. 
And there we go, and we'll just rescale that. And maybe hold it. There we go. All right, so that's our triangular wave coming out, so that's nice. All right, so that's our output from here now via, again, 10K. So we go to the inverting from output. First time I did this, I actually plugged it into the VCC by mistake, and then it took half an hour to figure out what was going on. Hopefully, I get it right this time. Uh, and then we go non inverting pin five. Set up our voltage divider again. I need to move that back one pin. Should have learned from last time. And we'll connect that one up. There we go. Uh, now we have a little capacitor in there. Actually, I might put that right at the top. There we go. And then our last 10K. Excellent. All right, let's see what sort of signal we get out of that one. Put this one back into live, and signal should be coming out of this. All right, so maybe we can get a little bit better if we put an AC mode. And let's just reset that. And then change the scale. Can we get a nice sine wave? We can. Now we might also try and make it a little bit more sensitive. That's not too bad. All right, so we'll see if I can, oh, it's gonna make it, there we go. That should be pretty good. And I'll hold that. And that's our sine wave. Now originally, and even maybe still, what I was going to do then was to uh, bring that uh, signal out into the other side of the op amp and then using that op amp and possibly a transistor as per the data sheet uh, to get a um, an amplification of that signal because at the moment this is measured in 0.1 uh, volts and it'd be really nice if it was using the the 9 volts that's coming in uh, there's a sort of a, like a voltage degradation each time that I've gone through that you can increase the voltage by, like that's 10K, you can change that down to around about 6K and uh, the same for the one that goes to the next op amp. But um, I thought probably the, in the end, the best thing to do was to try for amplification. So I'll, I'll give that a bit, a bit of a burl. And, um, but if it doesn't work, um, well, at least we can see that there's proof of concept that we are getting a, uh, a sine wave out of the, the, uh, the second op amp. A triangle wave out of the other side of the op amp uh, that is generating a square wave right at the start so um, that's the circuit working here's a possible uh, amplification circuit for that other side it did seem to work for a bit but uh, yeah i've got a little bit more work to do to get that one to actually fire and uh and that's the final circuit that um that you saw so yeah pretty good project to uh to generate sine waves and triangle waves and square waves see you next time